my dearest Clarissa. It has been far too long since I have seen you. Not a day goes by where I'm not falling in love with you. Again, and again, and again, and again. Hey, Sonny! And Hi! Again. Ready to do the video! Again, and then that's it. Hmm, maybe one more. And again! Perfect! Soon enough, you will be in my arms again. And again, and again. Sonny, and you again. can take off that ridiculous hat and stupid... And each golden sunrise and starry night will be as the same day. Forever. And our love will go on for an eternity again, and again, and again. Yeah. Say, uh, fellas, I hate to be the boss and everything, but, uh, the video started, and I don't see your gums flapping about today's movie. Bone Tomahawk. Thanks. Love, Sheriff Gritzy Beauregard Tenderfist. Put a sock in it. Finally! We are not doing this shit again, Spunky. You are not a cowboy just because you watched a cowboy movie. Oh, hey guys. Nice of you to finally show up, smiley face. I was just writing a letter to my girlfriend. Ha, <laughs> yeah right. Fantasize on your own time. Now introduce the movie, you fake cowboy. Oh. Gee, Sonny, why the long face? Don't make fun of the length of my face, Vic. Not now, when I'm at my most vulnerable. It's just an expression. I mean, why are you crying, bitch? I thought you loved Bone Tomahawk, the 2015 cannibal survival western horror thriller thing, written and directed by S. Craig Zachler. Zachler. Zah. S. Craig Zahler. Oh, you're on it today, Voldo. Yeah, you the man, coach. I did like Bone Tomahawk, starring Matthew Fox, Richard Jenkins, Kurt Russell, Lily Simmons, and Patrick Wilson, but it also made me kind of sad. Uh, I mean, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> but, uh... I just can't wait until my darling Clarissa is in my arms again. Uh-huh. And seeing this tender love story between the kidnapped Samantha O'Dwar and her gimpled Sir Galahad has only reminded me of my darling Clarissa's sweet, saucy face once again. Sonny, I'm not entertaining this. You, uh, think I need to call in Freddy to pinch it? I'm talking about the movie, you greenhorn. Greenhorn? That's racist, Sonny. No, sir. That is romance and gallantry. But since I met you, I don't get that feeling anymore like I used to. And this movie has that, and then some. And not just because you're prettier than most cows. I say it's recommended late night viewing for all star-crossed lovers. Hear, hear! Love story? Bah! Did we all watch the same movie? The one that opens to the crispity crunchity sounds of a raw throat slitting? Ah, <laughs> uh, what a romantic way to go out, pissing on David Arquette. Why they always wet themselves? This movie? The one where the skull-clad troglodytes keep their armless, legless, inbred cousins as prego puppets? Yeah, well, who are you to judge the romantic customs of another culture? Maybe, uh, maybe they like that. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's every pregnant lady's favorite thing. Hey, honey, how about a foot rub? Nah, could you just chop off all my limbs and drill spikes into my eyeballs instead? This water retention's killing me! Y'all are just focusing on the minor details. This movie is about how love conquers all. Uh-huh. Like when Deputy No Name gets turned into a rack of ribs with a side of blue cheese? What did love conquer there, exactly? Everybody loves this spicy, saucy McRibwich sandwich. Mm-mm. I'm loving it. See? I'm loving it. It's even in the slogan. That's right, Sarsaparilla. And you, too, could get your weird long fingers on a savory McRibwich today, thanks to today's sponsor. Oh, Boy! Food! The Ruiners is brought to you today by Civilization. Civilization gives you the smoky tang of a big old plate of juicy ribs. That tea smells gruesome. It's soup. Without all the hassle of butchering somebody for it. Join Civilization today and get a free pair of underpants. Man, that's a sweet deal! Underpants? Ugh. I'm out. And you guys are doing a false advertising, by the way. You're implying that the noble troglodytes plan to eat Buford the stable boy, yet you both know that it was explicitly stated. They don't eat Negroes. That's right! Not only is our tribe of inbred cave dwellers a gang of flesh-hungry cannibals, they're the worst kind of cannibal! The picky kind! Eh, white meat, dark meat, 
I'll put anything in my mouth. We got him saying that on tape, right? Except for Max Landis. His punishment is he has to spend the rest of eternity as a human turkey. To be fair, I don't think it'd be that difficult an adjustment. Listen, I'll grant you both that there was a love story element. Just an element? What else gets Otho dry up on his gangrenous leg and hobbling to the rescue? Not only him, but the whole town of Bright Hope gets together to save the fair Samantha. And why do you think that is? <laughs> I don't know, Sonny. Maybe because she had medical training? And that's valuable to a town in ye olde timey days? Where an ingrown nose hair meant you were fucking dead? Ah, the good old days, where everybody had a gun and nobody was sober. Those were the days when women wore such beautiful dresses. With their hair and tresses and curls, a man could have a mustache as bushy as he pleased. And if you got some baked beans in your beard and somebody called you out for it, you could strangle them with a bullwhip, even if it was the mayor. I remember taking a wagon to Nebraska with my sweet Clarissa. Oh, how her petticoats did shine in the moonlight, and how her bodice did tremble with the rhythmic trots of the horses. Enough with the nostalgia, fellas. There were a lot of things that pushed the fate of Bone Tomahawk's tragic cast, but I would argue that it is not love, or even justice, that drives the plot. It was... Civilization! That's today's sponsor. I got my eye on you, sport. You're killing it today. That's right. Civilization. What happens in the story? Sid Haig and Charcoal Briquette are a couple of thieves that, through the malaise of the Western expansion, find themselves traipsing through a sacred burial ground for a gaggle of savage cannibal creeps. <laughs> yeah, well, David Arquetti gets away, but the Troglodytes track him down. And they abduct not only him, but Deputy Nick, and the lovely Mrs. Dr. O'Dwyer, because they were so in love with Western culture. And, um, the whole town loves her and the deputy, so they send their best and brightest out to save the day. Eh, it's pretty flimsy, Sagebrush. I've seen gas station toilet paper that holds up better than that argument. I'm beginning to think y'all are jealous of my romantic, oldie fashiony love affair. You ain't got no girlfriend. Show me a photo. Why, sir, photography is a witchcraft that will steal a man's soul. Lord Vapula, you don't really agree with Sonny that Bone Tomahawk is a love story, do you? Why, you telling me you don't love watching fools get shot, hacked, scalped, burned, and bludgeoned? If that's not love, I don't know what is love. Uh, but baby, don't hurt me. me. Nah, I'm just fucking with you, Vortigern. This movie ain't no love story, because it doesn't suck. That dummy has gone totally cuckoo bananas. And under the starry western sunset, I shall massage your boobs again. And again. And again. Yeah, Scrappy's, uh, again. one of them insoles, you know? Involuntary cellomates. I'm involuntarily a lot of things. Again. Look at him. He's and a textbook again. case. Just keep him away from the cutlery drawer, because again. that kid's gonna do something wacky someday. Hey, I'm not his babysitter. That's good pushback, kid. You got Moxie. Learn from the best. Damn right. <laughs> ha! Your bones are as brittle as Hobbly O'Dwyer. I really liked, um, in the movie, where Matthew Fox's character, Bruder, shot those religious guys that showed up at their camp. That's when I decided he was probably the coolest character. I mean, I liked him as soon as he started putting the moves on Samantha. Oh, don't you talk that way about my wife. I know you had designs. And then talked about all the genocide he used to do. I've killed more Indians than everyone here put together. Well, it's an ugly boast. But man, when he shot his horse, that was the coolest. I don't think he wanted to do that, Lord Vapula. Saucy would never allow some greaser on her back. You trained her in bigotry? Yeah, yeah, we're all sorry about Saucy. Coincidentally, after Bruder shoots the religious intruders, some brigands shiv him in the titty and steal the posse's horses. Well, except for Bruder's horse. Poor Saucy gets served up by a 36 caliber spoon, all because Bruder can't keep his bullets to himself. And he trains his horse in bigotry. I don't think he's all that cool. You leave Saucy out of this. Not all white horses are bigots. Since you're the cool judge of Coolsville now, why don't you tell everybody who your favorite character is? It's probably hapless old comic relief chicory. Uh, well, the sheriff, he told me to, to go get him, but I'm old and I forgot. Because he just cries and says stupid stuff all the time. Like you. 
I believe those fleas are alive. Uh, no. But Chicory is a sweet old man who is more capable than he lets on. He can get pretty sappy, but I think he's a genuinely likable character. Why don't we wearing a crucifix? Then Jesus should have helped him. I mean, I like him better than Bruder. Then who? Sheriff Kurt Russell, right? So predictable and boring. Everybody loves that guy. You didn't think he was cool in this movie? Quiet! Ask about horses again, I'll slap you red. Huh. Yeah, he's pretty cool. This might be a controversial opinion, but I think Kurt Russell is great in any movie. Even that one where he plays jolly old Saint Nick? How could you hate Santa? I mean, it's pretty bad. At any rate, my favorite character in the movie was the Professor. Uh, who? Uh, I'm more of a ginger kind of demon myself. Remember Hanzi from the Fargo TV series? Or Westworld? They get that Zahn McLarnan guy for this movie, and they only give him, like, one scene. His character could have been the perfect foil for Bruder, the Indian killing fancy pants. But no, they make the one learned, suit-wearing Native American in the entire movie too scared to fight some dusty brutes who beat each other over the head with buffalo teeth. Not my kind. Yeah, them trigobites were kind of dumb, but that's what you get when your family tree is a branchless stump. And hey, that Hanzi guy was pretty cool, but he didn't really have much to do in the movie. You just like him for what you wanted him to be. Still, he would have added more tension to the posse if they'd included him. Yeah, but instead we get this sorry bunch. Two oldsters, one limpy lovesick, and one cool guy to carry all their dead weight. Smart men don't get married. Dude, Bruder is kind of a letdown. No way. He's got that cool hat. No, really. Matthew Fox plays the character well, but the movie kind of builds him up as this dubious, flamboyant, but capable killer with an interest in helping the people of Bright Hope. So you think he's going to have some big moment of redemption or an otherwise big bombastic act of some kind, but it never really comes. After he tells the posse his family was killed by Indians, he just kind of gets his fucking arm chopped off. Well, you're kind of right. There's that part when he's left with the repeater rifle and a cigar, and one of the troggle bites comes running out of the bush and throws a tomahawk, and Bruder shoots, and it cuts away. Uh, you're forgetting the dynamite. Oh yeah! When Bruder gets his arm chopped off and he asks for the rifle and the cigar, he also asks to be supplied with dynamite. Supply me with dynamite. And I'm all like, oh, cool! They had dynamite? I didn't know that. So they do the tomahawk cutaway thing, and you're thinking, oh, Bruder might still be alive, and he's gonna blow up the whole fucking tribe or something. But, nah. He doesn't even get the dignity of an on-screen death. Yeah, how lame was that? I understand how fun it can be to lead the audience in one direction, and then twist their necks back in the opposite direction. But sometimes when Chekhov's got a gun, he needs to fucking shoot it. Maybe you could say that the dynamite was just an expression, but it didn't seem that way. Why'd they even bother to do the cutaway with the gun sound effect in the first place? S. Craig Zoller is a filthy hope tease. He does the same thing with Kurt Russell at the end of the movie. Those gunshots? They were. Hope tease! Yeah, S. Craig Zoller got my hopes all swollen and veiny. Then he just walked away. Fucking asshole. Hope tease. Do not lose hope, compadres. This movie still ends happy and hopeful, and just as Samantha and Arthur O'Dwyer are reunited in each other's arms once again, so again, too, will I again be reunited with my bodaciously beloved Clarissa. Again. And again. Sonny, would you shut the fuck up? Hey, I was gonna say that. I'm not dealing with this Sonny's a cowboy shit all episode. Sonny, your name is not Gritzy McTurkey Fist or whatever, and there is no Clarissa. Fine. Really? Yeah, sure, Vic. Whatever you say. I suppose we'll just talk about the movie. Yeah, if uh, you could just go ahead and do your job, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, I don't think y'all are being all that fair to this here movie. It's got a share of tragic letdowns, but you can't complain about how they heat up to them. Ah! I'll make sure you're advanced. Yeah, there were a lot of really great tense action sequences shootouts, and crunchy violence, and it always kind of breaks out with little warning. Overall, the movie is pleasantly brutal, but uh, I don't know. I just think Bruder and Sheriff Hunt deserve better. Damn you! 
If I wrote this movie, I would have made it way more brutal. The Traga pipes would be all hulking razor tusk giants and they'd stomp through the plane, stepping on people and squishing the goo out of their guts like pizza rolls. I remember a lot of tenderfoots complaining about the violence in this movie when it came out, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, people are a bunch of fucking pussies now. Say, let's look at some of their comments and laugh at them for being a bunch of big, messy, sloppy pussies. Yeah, and a bunch of chubby little dicks. And to help us read the comments of these festering puddles of cement like cum, let's bring in our old friend, Winifred the Mailhead. Sup, pussies? Let's do this shit. Sherry L gives Bone Tomahawk half a star and says, It was the same cannibal porn you see in a cheap B, or less, movie. It was well over an hour too long and incredibly boring, and the scenes of murders were ridiculous. Jeez, sorry, Mom. Yeah, Mom. Just trying to have a little fun, Mommy. Mommy. I think Sherry L was expecting something more like Oklahoma or Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. From a movie called Bone Tomahawk? Hey, check this one out. It's a positive review. Mr. Mambo gives it four stars and starts out his review by saying, 68 years young. Then he rambles on about different movies he's seen. Blah, blah, blah. But check this out. Bone Tomahawk has an A-list cast. The requisite weathered authentic look in both town and people. Beautiful filming and dramatic lighting. Solid writing, humor, intriguing plot. But late in the goings, there is a scene of complete and utterly depraved brutality, which, to be honest, I wish I had not seen, and wish that I could unsee. This graphic butchery never would have been shown if this had been filmed in the 50s, 60s, 70s, probably even up to 2000. Now, practically anything goes. Audiences of today seem unbothered by, and perhaps even relish, seeing this brutality. Certainly one can become inured to it. Is it possible to become addicted to it? Is that progress? Oh, stuff it, you old fart. Yeah, you like the movie, you jerk. Yeah, he just wants people to die the clean, respectable, progressive way by getting a belly full of lead. I don't know what century this old guy lived through, but the violence in this movie is carrying on a tradition of shock that's been going on since before he was born. And we don't have to get into this whole fantasy violence and how it impacts society crap, because you humans live in the most civilized time in your sad, brutal history. Civilization! Yeah, and we remember a time when people were getting shot up and savagely scalped on a daily basis. But folks thought cursing in public was impolite. Hey, I've been watching horribly violent movies my entire life, and I've never cleave cloven somebody in two, scrotum first. Me neither. <clears throat> so anyway, guys, good job. Way to gang up on a sweet old man. Greg H. gives Bone Tomahawk one star and says, Worst piece of junk movie ever made, in my opinion. That wasn't the question! Greg H. should probably see more movies. I once saw a movie where a lady had sex with a pterodactyl. Oh, wait, it was a group of pterodactyls. That ain't no kind of review. Give us one from one of those big shot critics, Freddy. I might if you say please. Uh, pup. Never mind, dude. Chuck Bowen from Slant Magazine gives it two and a half stars, and he says, One wishes that S. Craig Zoller had more explicitly faced the cultural demons lingering within his premise, attempting to exercise them. Hmm. See, I think he's kind of right on that. What? What the hell does that even mean? What the Sam Hill? I, I don't get it. Tarnation, you must be out of your gourd. Settle down now. It's Vic's show, too. He can say his thing. Go ahead, Vic. Oh, he's stupid ass. Oh, well, damn. damn. Oh, I reckon. Thank you. As I was saying, all of this goes back to the expanse of Western culture and its concept of civilization. Civilization! Are murderous rogues coming into your town and tracking muddy cavemen in with them? I ain't doing nothing wrong. Tired of having to form a posse every time the locals get chopped into loose meat sandwiches? Ain't no concern of a civilized man. Are you sick of relying on hacksaws and steak hammers for medical care? Well, throw that old surgery rock away and join civilization! Comes with a free gun. Yes! Bone Tomahawk carries on more than one old western tradition, and one of them is deep-seated ethnocentrism. Throughout the history of the western film genre, Native Americans have been commonly depicted as stupid, brutish, villainous savages compared to the always virtuous cowboys. Later, 
Guilty generations of filmmakers often played them off as mystical or magical in an overbearing attempt to give them back some dignity. Even if it happened to be something like vengeful spirits getting pissed off over a violated burial ground. And I submit to you, lay demons and gentle freaks, that the troglodyte killers in Bone Tomahawk are simple rehashes of those old stereotypes. Only nowadays nobody's got the guts to make a villainous indigenous people movie, unless that tribe is either imaginary or so underrepresented in pop culture that nobody will complain, since calling them Indians would ruffle the feathers of a few Twitter Sudgwas. Sudgwas? Bone Tomahawk takes a step back and calls them troglodytes, because of course, nobody can thaw out a troglodyte and give them a platform to defend themselves. Uh, troglodytes aren't real, Von Trier. You're just as crazy as Sam Peckerpaw over there. Dude, I'm staying out of this shit. Troglodyte representation now! Settle down, Vic. You gotta make that diaper last for the rest of the month. Oops. I tell you what, guys. I know Vapula is one of those rich kids who sat on a silver spoon his whole life. Hey! And you guys were, I don't know, born in a landfill? But me? I come from the deepest, darkest jungles of hell. Like up near the Great Lakes area? And I think I know a thing or two about being an indigenous person. Oh, is that so, Missy? Uh, yeah, Pecos putts. And I think there isn't much difference between a movie like this and movies about Nazi zombies or Civil War ghosts. It's too over the top to take seriously. All the western mustache guys had ironic exaggerations to their characters. You guys even showed that part earlier where Sid Haig scratches his coconuts with a loaded gun. And the troglodyte guys. It's like, uh, the hills have eyes and Cannibal Holocaust had teenage inbred ninja mutants. Vic had a point earlier! I sure did! When he suggested that Zon McLarnon would have been a great addition to the posse. I agree. Sure. But Winifred had a point. <clears throat> yeah, I, I guess. When she says it's just a silly movie. Totally silly. Like, you guys, how many times do you have to watch movies where people walk into a deserted place and see skulls and weird shit everywhere and they just go, Oh, this looks like a cool place to hang out. But, but, but just because it's silly doesn't mean it isn't also pushing an anti-caveman narrative. Thick, dude. There's no way a society like the troglodytes could survive. They're caricatures. They come from the Valley of the Starving Men for a reason. Every surrounding tribe would have, in reality, wiped them out long ago because you don't exactly expand your culture through casual cannibalism. Don't get me wrong, cannibalism has its purposes, but strictly on a tactical case-by-case -case basis. You don't just go around eating whomever you please, like some people. <coughs> Some of the violence in this movie, ritual and otherwise, was surely based on real-life events. But Bone Tomahawk is real in the same way Texas Chainsaw Massacre is real. Hey! Hey, you guys wanna hear my Ed Gein impression? Nah. Eh, I'll pass. Uh, not really. Yes! Eddie, get on out of bed and make a nipple belt for Mama. Eddie! You get that cookie sheet of vaginas out of the smoker and start to knitting me a sweater. No, mama, no. My feet are still sore from all the grave digging. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like City Slicker Vic's position about this movie is just making a mountain out of a molehill. Clearly, the true reason this movie was made was to show us all the power of love. For love conquers all, and peace is won through conquest. Therefore, it is love that is the gluey juice that gives society all stuck together in cooperation and civility. Are you a hippie or a fucking cowboy? Sex offender. Sex offender. Only involuntarily! I didn't know that barrel of pickles was underage! <laughs> well, you're all just jealous that I've got a real best gal now, and I just got a text from her. My lady love Clarissa is on her way back from Alabama, and she's looking for a slammy from my Emmy. Stop playing with my phone, Sawgrass. Let's look at his text, Lord Vapula. Let's look for things that are problematic. Yeah. <laughs> Do you really want to be like that? No. No. Yes. But like, it's my phone though. Sonny, you want to believe in love stories? You go right ahead. But I think the O'Dwyers were kind of uninteresting characters. They needed a fair Princess Peach to get kidnapped by Bowser, and they needed a feeble Mario to jump to the rescue. It was just a device to get from point A to point B heading. The movie looked nice, sounded nice. Was that it? It's got interesting performances, some snappy lines. Who we'll makes sure all this has value? But I wouldn't say it gets too deep into character development or social commentary, and that's fine. 
That's not what this movie is for. Just like old John Wayne movies weren't for those things either. I could understand how somebody could watch this movie and pick stuff out of it. And that's because it's as much a horror movie as it is a western. And horror movies, the good ones anyway, are often good at tricking your reptile brains into thinking about stuff while enjoying simulated murder and mayhem. So if you guys are thinking about it in any kind of deeper way than it is, it's not really a bad thing. So... Technically, in a bullshit kind of way, I'm not wrong! And I'm not either! Well... Fools! That's not what Freddy's saying at all! She's saying that Trobgoblipes ain't real! Love ain't real! I... I'm not really saying that. And the only reason why anybody watches this movie is to see a bunch of cool shit like blood and bullets and murder. And you guys are complete dum-dums for thinking with your brains so hard. Really didn't say that. Say, did you all think it was weird how Arthur was able to use one of them troglodyte throat whistles to tactically flush him out one at a time? I figure sound carries pretty far out there on the plains. Yeah, but that whole troglodyte death whistle thing was kind of lame in the first place. Forget about the death whistles. You guys didn't notice how all those loud percussive gunshots would only be heard if the script called for it? Hmm. You know, I think that was intentional. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like they're making a statement about gun violence and how we only pay attention to it when we- Ah, uh, shut up, Venison. There you go again. Overthinking this movie with your dumb brain thoughts. You guys are so dumb. And the freaking whiners who say, ooh, this movie's too violent, are dumb too. Because it isn't even all that violent. What it had was cool. The gunshots and meat cleaving had punch both visually and in sound design. But the most brutal moment in the movie is reserved for some no-name Nick. And he didn't even stay alive long enough for his spleen to burst. They teased the dynamite. They teased O'Dwyer's leg. He's gonna have to take that leg. Where's my leg amputation? I am the almighty audience, and I demand to see a gangrenous leg. I think you need a cooldown, Vaps. I am cool. It's just so frustrating when you're trying to enjoy some good old-fashioned Stone Age dismemberment, and the morality police gotta come in and rain all over your murder parade. But we still all like the movie. Shut up. It's like a, a guy can't even disembowel people for fun anymore. Just makes me so mad. Everybody's so stupid and dumb compared to me. I'm no longer room temperature! Okay, it's getting a little stuffy in here. I think I'm gonna head out. Ha! Head. I get it. All right, stagecoach. Now it's time for you to pay for stealing my phone again. Ha! Huh. Come on, partner. Surely we can hash out a deal. Oh, I'm gonna deal all right. Deal out a heap and help and a pain. Huh? What's that? Wow, uh, hey, Saddle Sore, your, uh, girlfriend's here. Ew! Oh! Ew! Oh, it's in my shoes. Uh, I think some of it got in my mouth. Hmm. Howdy, folks. Hope you liked the video. If you did, then hit that little old like button. And maybe give this video a share. It'd be right neighborly of you. You could also subscribe to our channel. But if you do, remember to click that notification bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. It really helps us out. Feel free to leave us a comment. Or if you'd like to help support the show, you could mosey on over to our Patreon page. But mostly, we just want to thank you all for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go cancel my OkCupid account and uh, wash some of this slime out of my mouth. <laughs>